Stay tuned for more Fast Lane Bowling action next. We continue now the celebration of the silver anniversary of the Kings of Bowling format on local television. Hi, everybody. I'm J.D. Hayworth. Along with me again, the lady with the feather in her cap, Bo Utipole, and you're wearing the right kind of chapeau for the place we are today. That's right. The Country Club of Bowling, home of the Hoinkie Classic, and they just started Friday, so they've got 43 weeks of tournament coming up here. Busy time at the Western Bowl, and a guy to help us cover some of the busy activity we have today, of course, David Newrath. David, it's good to have you back in the analyst chair. Uh, J.D., we got off to a uh, great start with the uh, youngsters again, and we've got two worthy competitors coming up right now. That's right, we do, David. Take a look at one of the gentlemen right now. First of all, in our first match today, it's Jerry Eckel, 49 years of age, a pipe fitter uh, who is from Cheviot, and he kind of an unconventional form there, David. It took him a lot of years to develop that form, J.D., but he does it probably with as much style and grace as anyone, and he can knock down some pins. And, of course, that's the bottom line, being effective. Now, he's going to go up against Rick Pollard, a gentleman out of Indiana, out of Versailles, to be specific, and Rick is a smooth operator. High back swing, knee bend isn't really as low as it could be, but he generates maximum turn, maximum revolutions, and he saws pins in half. All righty, so the stage is set. It'll be Echo against Pollard. Bo, it's good to see you. Love that hat. David, always a pleasure. I'm psyched up, and let's get going now with a beautiful king of TV bowling. by the Hudipole Brewing Company, America's great small brewery. Back at the Western Bowl with a future Boulder of America. Probably get started in the Buddy Bumpers program here at the Western Bowl, but today it's adults only, and we start with a gentleman 49 years of age, Jerry Eckel, with an unconventional approach, David Newrath. He started bowling at the age of seven in the nation of Japan. Maybe this had some bearing. Watch this. Two, three, four... Five, six, seven, eight. Eight steps. That eight-step approach works just fine for Jerry, doesn't it, David? You, you know, we've alluded to this a hundred times on the show, and uh, <laughs> it bears repeating. I don't care what you do, as long as you do it every time. You can take 12 steps, two steps. Repetition is the name of the game. If you can repeat a motion, if you can repeat a motion, you're going to score well. Rick Pollard is competition, leaving that pesky weasel in the corner. It uh, opens the, open the show with a great shot, and here you see it right here, wrap 10 to start the game off with six pin. It's the second one from the right-hand side. You see it go up and around the neck right there. Should be an easy spare for Rick. He just hauls off and throws it a little more firm. Search and destroy mission for Rick Pollard. <laughs> as he nails that one, a self-described jack of all trades. According to his information sheet, it says where? He says anywhere. He'll go anywhere, anytime, and right now, he finds himself in the second frame of the opening match on Utapol, King of Bowling. He said that? He really did say that? I like it. That's what he says here on the sheet, but I'll tell you, he's got a difficult one to pick up here now. Maybe his ears are burning out. I'm going to have to get him on that one. <laughs> he threw that ball wide. He left a uh, little bit of a split here, J.D. It's one you don't see a lot, but it's the two, five, seven. Is there any way for a bowler to practice this kind of atypical arrangement? Well, it's a combination. This spare can be made with a combination of a shot that you're going to use for the bucket, the two, four, five, and the two, seven. Uh, it's really not all that tough. You just have to work on a combination of shots and then vary just a little bit off of all those, J.D. He took the two pins straight back, leaving the five and the seven, however, in this case, the ball did not hook off sharply enough. All righty. Here comes Mr. Echo for frame number two. Here's our Hoinkie in the crowd. Uh, here at Western Bowl, and... Uh, 
His sons, Tracy and Russell, do a fine job helping him run this 68-lane uh, establishment. Though the Hoinkies really have developed a palatial environment in which to bowl. It's the country club. <laughs> it really is. Well, the man going to town right now, two strikes in a row out to make it three in the third frame, is Mr. Eckel. And, uh, oh, this guy knows what he wants to do, David. Contrast in lines, to say the least. We'll see if we can get a tight shot of it later. Jerry is playing straight up, or even with a little bit of a point, over the 11th board on his side. Second arrow, he went wide that time, and the ball got back. But we're going to see something here. He, trust me, he's hitting 11 and he's striking. Hits 11 and he strikes. He hits the ninth board, which creates a different arc on the ball, and he's going to wrap the seven pin. Now, that the, the pin you want to keep, see right there over the ninth board. Now, the pin you want to keep your eye on some four pins. Second from the left-hand side, watch it here. Goes to the left up and around the neck and just as it's going around it spins it's amazing how it just curls around let's see if we can pick it up here just a minor variation to cause that okay, you found it and he gets his mark now contrasting styles we were talking about take a look at this extreme left hand side of the lane He's throwing his ball in the vicinity of the fourth arrow or 20th board right there. Gets it out and just an absolute pressure. Comes back home right into the heart. Tell us we're qualifying going on again today, Bo. Okay, we're at Princeton Bowl. As we watch this strike, or you see a few of these at Princeton today too. Solid strike. Look at this. No deflection. The ball going right straight through the heart. Every pin doing its job. Ten pins in the pit. Bo, go ahead. Well, I just wanted to say, we had a 300 yesterday. Two of them, actually. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Dave Newath. Oh, that's right. <laughs> and Rob Hunt. <laughs> mm, well, I tell you, no 300 game today for Mr. Pollard, although uh, he's looking pretty good. He's got a tough one to pick up here. Going wide, leaving the 245. The, like I told you last frame, a combination of the little cluster of pins over there on the left-hand side. Now, he chopped the spare before. I'll bet you he learned from it and he won't miss it <coughs> this time. Mm. Once okay. again, the new F factor at work. <laughs> What's going to be interesting, Bo, is the day when David qualifies and he'll have to give his analysis uh, from the well down here getting ready to bowl. Oh, man. I can't wait. <laughs> well, here's hoping he'll be up here with us just a little while longer. I'm a bit selfish as I get broken in here on the beautiful king of TV bowling. Here's Mr. Echo. That was in prime position to put this match in an awkward situation early. Jerry gets excited, almost takes himself out of the play here. I'll tell you, he got up on one foot there, and it looked like it could have been mass mayhem for just a second. He was ran a, into the ball rack. Yeah, it was that a legal block? And we take a look at the score, jumping off to an early 24-pin lead. If Jerry fills this spring, it's as if it were a 34-pin lead. Like I said, you don't win or lose a match in the first half of the game, but you can make it more difficult, and Mr. Pollard has done that. We'll look at the concentration. Okay, Jerry, let it go. Jerry Echo on a mission today. You know, we alluded to a 300 game before. I want We've got something so exciting this year, I just can't wait. Tell us about it, Miss Bo. <laughs> West Hills Ford is going to present for a 300 game rode on the television show oh. a car oh, and I it's really neat because every single day or every week we're going to have a different car and today sitting in the parking lot right here at western bowl we have a 1987 two passenger escort ext and i just hope it happens so we got the keys with us we're ready to give it frame five driving on through absolutely perfect i mean he just paid it right on through there david and jerry eckle sure did how many years has it been since our last 300 bow david <laughs> easter sunday stones lanes <laughs> oh 1973 it's it's been a while and i'll tell you what jd no better way to welcome you to cincinnati than a, seeing a 300 game on a show this year and i hope we can do it for you power perfection personified you're going to see it on this replay watch this ball devastate the back row cutting through so sharply and so much power see it there it's leaving the nine and then what gets it that's the head pin folks mm -hmm. they're vapor that was the head pin i was waiting for that <laughs> all right here's rick again can he do it twice yes indeed he can so that vaporizer out now for rick pollard like I said, you don't win or lose it, you just make it tough. And when the tough 
get going to rough whatever something. Whatever that is. Yeah, whatever that is. Apologies saying. to Maynard G. Krebs. When the going gets rough, <laughs> the tough get going, David, I believe is the way they do it. And here comes I knew the that. unconventional. I knew that. I was just checking you out. Count them out here. Look at the feet. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. And a strike. That new rap well, back should work again. Which what should have been it was a good shot what leaves the week seven or in the case of right hand or week ten let's take a look at it here the four pin again second one to the left hand side of your screen is not going to go to work on the seven it's going to go to the channel right here and lay down see it get trapped in the channel mm. it's about an eighth of an inch too low to climb out and take the seven pin out that's caused by not quite enough side roll or action on the ball jd Let's see what kind of action he gets here as he tries to pick it up. Jerry's good spare shot. Should make it. He nails it. <laughs> no, I tell you what, this this time of year is exciting for me. We we get a chance to come out and start doing a show again. I've missed this, Bo. Oh, I have too. This this is a lot of fun for me and it's and it's my fifth year with WLW and I've uh, uh, I've developed a fine liking for peacocks. That's right, you have <laughs> to like them. That's right, I like peacocks. And, and I think Bo has that feather in her hat today, doesn't she? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Jerry Eckle. It just doesn't want to go for it. Well, he's... I'm sure we wouldn't have a, a close enough shot of it to get it, but I'll tell you what's happening. He's going to round the ball early. What that does is to create a little bit of a, a side roll early hook and no finish situation and that's what Jerry's gotten into now. If he had the advantage of being able to watch this on the uh, on the tape, he could correct it. You know Jerry has already won one match today. Uh, we have a new format in the King qualifying and the second high qualifier from our Saturday qualifying and our second high qualifier from Sunday bowl a match prior to the beginning of the show to determine who's going to go on the show and Jerry uh, beat uh, Don Scudder 225 to 202 this morning earlier. earlier. It's easy for you to say. I know, I just <laughs> I stumbled over that one. <laughs> but we're putting Don to work today helping keep score. Yes, he is. He's our standby. Here's Rick Pollard. Oh, 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 oh was that great. Tune it up. You de I tell you what, until it's mathematically over, I mean until it's at the point where you can go to the restaurant and get a Coke, don't count this guy out right there over the 20th board, fourth arrow, firmly in the pocket. Action speaks louder than words. Ten pins in the pit, every pin doing its job. Rick Pollard is on a roll. Now let's watch the jack of old trades here. <laughs> Pause. What happens in this situation? Well, no, see, all that was is his concentration was broke, and uh, you can stop. J.D., as long as you do not deliver the ball, it does not count as a delivery. Even if you let it out of your hand, if you catch it before it hits the lane, it's not a legitimate delivery. So you have the option. Didn't seem to phase him that much, however, that stubborn 10... He left, watch this, crucial shot, get him right back in the game, six pin, right there you see it going up and around the neck in a crucial situation. What does he do? He throws as good a shot as any human being can. Nails it. Come on, You know, with our new format, we, we do have a way to determine. I already know one person that's bowling on the show next week. Okay, from, from our qualifying at Princeton yesterday. Tom Lee was our high qualifier. He did have a 777 mm. series, the three sevens. And Don Lifeline will be bowling against the second high qualifier today uh, to determine if he will be on the show next week. I just thought it was clear voice. Well, that's how you do it. <laughs> that's <Hey>! it. <laughs> one left there, Mr. Newgrath going high that he feels the heat. Rick Pollard is lined up and throwing the ball well, feels the heat, perhaps causing him to pull the ball up through the nose, leaving a single pin spray luckily, but uh, that was a very poor delivery. See what Jerry Echo can do here. There's the fancy footwork. Nailed 
has it. In whose shoes would you rather be right now, David, as a competitor, Mr. Echo or Mr. Pollard's shoes? Having the lead is, is always nice, but right now, I think unquestionably the momentum is with Rick. Uh, I would rather be in Rick's position because he has absolutely flushed the last four shots. Uh, Jerry has made two Aaron shots. I, uh, I would rather be in Rick's shoes. Well, let's see if Mr. Eckel can maintain his lead. Nails it. Of course, then again, <laughs> <I'd been laughs> it's not pre-designed, folks. I'm not trying to put that new wrath uh, factor to work. Jeez, I'm not going to the track today. <laughs> Rick Pollard. Here's the Hoosier. Dead on. Critical shot, eight frame, might be the deciding factor in this match. That solid, solid 10 pin keeps him eight pins down to Jerry Eckel. Both bowlers have a strike working in the ninth frame. It's an eight pin match, ladies and gentlemen. If Rick takes it to the wall, Jerry Eckel has to answer with the first two. Situation easy. Strike as much as you can. Simple formula. Let's see if Rick can pull it off. It's close. It's wide, leaving the 2 5. Nice not out of it. Don't go away with well, the spare strike, would force Jerry to spare. How disappointing is this for him? He's mathematically not out of it. But what is what is his goal right now? Both obviously to, to pick this up, but how does he keep his mind right? Well, at this point, all you can do is make your spare. Pin count. Uh, pin count is basically well. It's important right now. Also, you want to fill up as much as you can. And then I hate to say it, all you people at home that are good sports all the time and would never say hope your opponent uh, has some trouble, uh, I guarantee you, Rick, Rick Pollard wouldn't be too upset to see Jerry Eckel make a mistake. Rick's able to nail the strike there, so it's a sit back and watch situation as Jerry Eckel steps up. 192, commendable game. Any kind of a spare will win. Obviously, any strike will win. Let's watch. <laughs> what do you think, J.D.? You going to let up now? <laughs> I can look at the concentration on Jerry Echo's face, and I can tell he is not letting up a bit. In fact, I see, I know he's cool, calm, and collected. David, but I see that little bit of sweat <laughs> on the forehead. <laughs> that appears every 10 frame in, in close matches. I've one competitor or another. A spare will win it. He's won it. Uh, assuming he does not hit his ankle or throw a channel, he's won this match. Any kind of pin count. And recalling the words of Yogi Berra. It's never baseball. over until it's over. That's right. Knew that one. So let's see if I've got the uh, Hayworth factor, if, if it works like the new Raft factor, although I wouldn't want to jinx anybody here. Three pins on this shot will make Jerry Eckel the winner. There you go, J.D. He nails it. Puts it on through. Closing out with a strike. So Jerry Eckel, our first winner on the beautiful King of Bowling.